Hi, today we will be discussing about germplasm evaluation. Germplasm is the bedrock for crop improvement. Germplasm is essential for the present generation or also future generation. It is very essential for increasing the crop production. It is very essential for the security, food, nutritional security and it is very essential for the soil security also. Germplasm deals with every aspect of living beings. It is very very essential for, for agriculture, for animal husbandry and so on and so forth. Today we will be discussing about germplasm evaluation. What it means? What is crop germplasm? It means seeds, plants or plant parts that are useful in crop breeding, crop improvement, research and conservation. This is crop germplasm. It is amalgamation of all the plant parts, seed, productive parts, plants and everything. So that everything combined it is called as crop germplasm. What is the need for crop germplasm? I told that this crop germplasm provides immense benefit for the mankind for preserving the environment. This germplasm is a repository of genes, valuable genes and these genes confers resistance to the pest and diseases. It confers adaptability, it confers all the possible quality parameters. So it is a repository of genes and these genes has to be used for crop improvement. Further, new crops are being sought to better serve man's needs and this new crop evolution or everything is possible only when we tap the crop germplasm resources. And the new crops may are in dire need for what? For medicinal purposes, for developing a, a cancer uh, drugs it is required, for industrial uses, for developing a crop which can produce a fiber, for example a fiber crop in a shorter period of time that is required and for producing a nutritious food, nutraceutical. So for that also new crops are required and there is a demand, there is every day the man's need is increasing. To meet his needs new crops has to be evolved and for that we need to use crop germplasm productively, for that we need to conserve crop germplasm and for that we need to evaluate it. What are the activities in germplasm conservation? There are many activities, first and foremost activity is collection of germplasm. Second important activity is germplasm conservation, third is germplasm evaluation, fourth is cataloging, multiplication and distribution. Next is training of personnel. The last one is global coordination. These all actions combinedly is called as germplasm conservation. We will see one by one. The first and foremost thing is germplasm collection. This germplasm collection is a very very important component in germplasm conservation. Only when we can collect the germplasm then only we can save it, conserve it. And this is the prime source of variability. So we have a lot of variation in the germplasm and the prime source is collection, collection of germplasm from the field. And this is possible by two ways, one is germplasm exploration and second is procuring the germplasm from agencies like research institutes, individuals we can procure. These are the two ways we can collect the germplasm. Germplasm exploration, what it means? It means that it is a kind of a trip, short trip, it, it can be a kind of a trip wherein the accessions, the germplasm will be collected, the plant materials will be collected and that collected materials that will be collected and thereafter will be conserved properly and this is a basic thing, it is a kind of exploration, exploration. So the basic objectives involved in germplasm exploration is to tap the variability that is existing in the crop plants, the wild species, land races. So the whatever the variations that is existing in the crop wild relatives that has to be tapped and that is the first objective. Second objective is to meet the demands of the breeders. The breeders or researchers they have certain unique demands. To meet their demands also germplasm exploration is undertaken. Next is where to go for it, where to explore. 
there are certain areas where you can look for germplasms, where you can look for the variability. The first and foremost area of focus is the center of origin. In the center of origin which signifies there is a diversity, it signifies diversity because in the center of origin the genetic variability, the species variability that will be very very high and in that area if you go for exploration then definitely we can have a rich germplasm resource. Second area is we need to look at the periphery of the center of origin. So, in that area, periphery region also we can collect good resources, biological resources. The third important area is the crop plant can be introduced in certain areas and it has been introduced and in the process it has tried for a long period of time. So, it has, it has faced the challenges in the form of environmental conditions also, it has faced the challenges in the form of pest stress, biotic or abiotic stresses also. So, in that way what happened the plant, crop plant has adapted to the environment. Since it has adapted there would have been a genetic change within the plant. So, this is also an important resource that also we need to tap it. The best example is for example, a land race. A land race has been developed because of what? It has been developed by the farmers. They have naturally, they have gone for the selection. So, though they have not adopted a scientific plant breeding method, but the procedure they followed is the selection process. So, in the selection, what they would have gone for certain parameters, certain traits and based on the, that trait, they would have gone for selecting a particular plant. So, this particular plant though they not though they may not give good yield, but they will give a stable yield and also this land races they have an adaptability, adaptable, they are adaptable to extreme environmental conditions. So, this land races are having suitable genes adaptive for uh, suitable genes for adaptation, suitable genes to exist in extreme environmental conditions. So, this land race is also very very important resources. So, that also it is a very important part of germplasm. So, that has to also is to be collected in the process of germplasm exploration. And next is the sampling sites where we will go for sampling. So, we this is sampling and sampling site has to be planned well in advance and that has to be planned very well taking into account the ecological condition taking into account the soil condition, topographic condition, the demand of the breeder. So, everything has to be taken into account, then only we will go for sampling. The sampling site, if there is a lot of variation, variation I said the soil condition, environmental condition, there, there is a lot of variation. In that case what happened, the sampling will be done very compactly, it means to say more number of sampling will be done. That is a very, very important point because only when our sampling exercise is right, then only we can collect the or tap the biological resources properly. And the sampling procedure, if you see it, the uh, for example, it can be a random sampling or it can be a selective sampling. In case of random sampling, irrespective of the trait, whatever the variations that is existing in the in the habitat that will be collected. So, random sampling means the sample whatever we have collected that will exhibit a wider genetic base. But in case of a systematic sampling, so the focus will be on certain trait, the plants having that particular trait will be selected, others will not be selected. So, in that case what happened, the product, the sample will be having narrow genetic base. That is a key difference between random sampling and systematic sampling. There are certain priorities. When I say priorities, the, when you go for a sampling, there are certain priorities. So, the first and foremost important thing is we need to understand whether the species is threatened or not, whether the species is vulnerable or not. That is one important priority. We have to pre, uh, give much priority. And second important thing is that as I told you that the breeders, the researchers are in demand of certain samples, certain germplasms. So, that is also has to be taken into account before proceeding for exploration. These are the two collection priorities. So, having said this thing, once we have got all this procedure is set, we will go for sampling. So, when we go for sampling, how many plants will be taking it? There is certain criteria because for example, in the case of a sampling site, we will be going for a 50 to 100 plants will be collecting the samples and from each plant more than 50 seeds. So, in a way we will be trying to capture whatever the variability in the that sampling environment will be trying to capture it by what? 
properly systematically by doing sampling and also by recording whatever we are having by field records we will be maintaining a field record and we will be making a proper registry of this particular thing because that will be helpful in the later stages for evaluation. So, that I will explain to you later. Second way of uh, collecting the germplasm is procurement. I told you that we can procure the germplasm either from the research institutes or individuals or a local organization it is possible they may have their uh, resources and from those people we can collect the germplasm we can procure the germplasm and I wanted to stress important one important point is this collection of germplasm is a prime exercise for conservation conservation of germplasm and next second step is the germplasm conservation it means what it means the management of human use of the biosphere so that it may yield sustainable benefit to the present generation while maintaining its potential to meet the needs and aspirations of future generation. I am talking about the intergenerational equity, I am talking about the intragenerational equity, I am talking about what? I am talking about the conservation of the germplasm that is in great demand for the human beings not only in the present generation for the future generation also. So, this germplasm can, can be conserved by adopting strategies like in situ conservation and ex situ conservation. Third important step is the germplasm evaluation. This is what an important topic that we have to discuss now. So, what exactly it is? Why we go for it? All said that germplasm is an essential component for crop breeding a plant breeding. For crop improvement it is very very essential. But in a developing country this germplasm collection has not been tapped properly, not been used properly. So, in developing country this germplasm collection can be used wisely for improving the agriculture production. That is a very very important lacuna that can be this is can be used for development in case of Africa for uh, South Asia in many regions wherein the agriculture production has to be increased. There is an urgent need for it. So, if you look at the population by 2050 the population the world global population will be 9.6 billion we need to increase the agriculture production we need to double the agriculture production for that how we can do it we need to tap the germplasm we need to tap the plant genetic resources by that way what happened we will be in a position to get the quality genes suitable genes the genes that will help the plants to thrive in extreme environmental conditions the genes will be helping the plants to be resilient to climate change. So, that is a very very important thing for that we need to evaluate evaluate means what it is a description of the accessions what all the traits there are certain traits and we will be describing the germplasm with regard to or with respect to the traits. So, in other words the assessment of germplasm accession for various traits is germplasm evaluation it is a first and foremost exercise and we are doing it what we are doing it because it is having lot of uses this germplasm evaluation will help us in maintaining the collections germplasm collections because the germplasm collection it has to be maintained because we will be taking the germplasm for rejuvenation for reproduction so on so forth. So, in the process what happened if we have a proper evaluation that means that the germplasm collection will not be lost we will be going for proper labeling. So, that is possible if we go for germplasm evaluation because we will be evaluating the accession germplasm accession for certain traits either morphological physiological and so on so forth. So, this germplasm evaluation is a is having a key use in maintenance of the collection germplasm accessions. Second important uh, use of germplasm evaluation is that it can help in doing genetic research cytogenetic research to understand the variations genetic variations in a crop plant to understand the diversity that is existing in the crop plants. So, the research is also very very important thing and for that also germplasm has to be evaluated and what not. So, this germplasm evaluation if it is done properly that we can find out that this germplasm whether the germplasm is suitable or the accession is suitable to thrive in extreme environmental conditions it is having any potential for resistance to pest and diseases it is having any tolerance to cold drought flood. So, this is also possible by proper evaluation. So, this is the aim of germplasm evaluation. 
So, the germplasm or accession is evaluated for morphological features, physiological features, biochemical fe features, plant pathological features and entomological features. For the resistance to the pest and diseases, biochemical that is also a very important trait. So, this all the for the, all these traits the accessions will be evaluated. There are certain descriptors because uh, international there is an international body, international body, international plant genetic resource institute it has provided a model list of descriptors. They have provided this descriptors it includes a lot of traits and based on these traits the, um, the curator, the scientist involving in uh, involved in the germplasm conservation they will go for proper evaluation. But this IPGRI that list whatever it, they have provided it is very exhaustive, it is very difficult to ma maintain, it is very difficult to evaluate for want of what money, the time of the researcher for cost and for what many other accessions because the accessions what we are talking about it is a huge collection germplasm accessions. So, it is very difficult to maintain, but still we need to go for it the possible list of possible or few or whichever it is a very key critical descriptors that has to be taken into account. For that NBPG or National Bureau of Plant Genetic Resources what they have done they also came with the list of descriptors for many many crops and that is used as a uh, like a platform the template. So, based on that thing the evaluation will be done. The first and foremost important exercise in germplasm evaluation is we need to increase the seed stock. We have a seed and that stock has to be increased because this is a very important thing because we have a, the quantity of seed what we having in the germplasm collection that will be very very less. The first and important thing is that we need to increase the stock. Only when we increase the stock evaluation will be made possible, maintenance of germplasm will be possible, rejuvenation or regeneration of germplasm will be possible. So, the first and foremost step in germplasm evaluation is to increase the seed stock, but this step is a very very risky step because there is every possibility in this particular process that we can lose accession also. Why? Because the seed stock which we will be going for multiplication it is kind of vulnerable to many many changes, it is vulnerable to pest and diseases, it is vulnerable to many many factors, contaminants, natural selection, human selection. So, in the process what happened the seed stock may get lost. So, it is a very very important step. So, how to manage it? So, to manage this particular step we try to multiply the seed in the region where we have collected the accessions. So, in that case what happened we can have a control over the natural selection, natural selection will not be taking place. So, in that way what happened the genetic that whatever the modification that will not be taking place that genetic change will not be taking place. So, we will have a control over it. So, that is the reason why the seed multiplication in case of germplasm accessions will be done close to the region where we have taken or collected the accessions. That is a very very important thing. So, in this at this stage also we will be recording the morphological traits, morphological traits of the plants we will be recording it, we will be making a proper record. And when you talk about the next step as far as the, the germplasm evaluation is the descriptor list. I told you that IPGARA has come with the detailed list, exhaustive list, but since I told you about the cost factor and the time factor it is very very expensive we cannot go for it. So, for that reason the every nature a national body in our case in India NBBG a National Bureau of Plant Genetic Resources has come with the detailed list descriptor list that is what we are using it for evaluation purpose. When I talk about the descriptor list it includes what it includes the morphological features it includes the physiological or many other fa factors. So, that is to be taken to account and that will be a key uh, for us to go for evaluation. And next step as far as this uh, germplasm evaluation is concerned is the passport data because in the process of evaluation we will be collecting lot of data that has to be kept in particular format and that is the passport data is a very very important thing wherein we will be collecting the data 
during collecting the samples also. So whatever the data, what all the data will be collecting in this particular step, we will be collecting data about the site, about the site identification, soil characters, topographic characters and every site parameters, everything will be collecting it and that has to be kept properly because this is a very, very important exercise. When I say the soil character, when I say the topographic character, it also gives an indication to the plant breeder that this particular accession can thrive in that particular environment. They are adaptable to that particular environment. So that will give a key to the plant breeder, a cue to the plant breeder that the plant breeder will be okay fine. They will be choosing this particular accession. If they use it, they choose that accession, they can have a gene for that particular trait, for that particular character, for that particular resistance, for that particular tolerance. So that is the first thing, site identification data has to be collected and it has to be kept properly. And another this particular data, passport data, it also includes the collector's number. Further, the type of material, the what type of material they will be collecting, so the data, the, it will be for example a population, so population can be a cross pollinated uh, crop, so population or it can be a pure line. So whether it is a pure line or population that has to be mentioned properly because what is a pure line? Pure line is a progeny of a single fertilized plant, self pollinated plant is pure line. So this we have to find out whether it is a pure line or a population. So that also has to be mentioned clearly and as far as the status of uh, the plant material is concerned, it can be a wild species, it can be a weed, it can be a cultivar, it can be a land races because all the genetic variability that will be existing as far as the crop is concerned that is it will be existing in the wild species or a weed species or a cultivar or a land races and that also has to be clearly mentioned during the process of evaluation. The date of collection, the date of collection is a very important thing that also has to be maintained properly and when you talk about the source it can be a field, it can be a institute or a farm store. So these all the forms, the data in from this thing it will be form the path, it is called as passport data, it is collected at the time of collecting the samples. Second step in germplasm evaluation is characterization. This characterization unlike the, the earlier collection of the data, the passport data, this characterization deal with the irritable characters, irritable. So when it is passed on from the irritable means it is from one generation to another the particular trait has been transferred. So this is the irritable characters will be collected, all the data related to the irritable characters will be noted down. This is called characterization. For example, the spike, panicle shape, seed shape, the seed color and other characters all are irritable. So these all will be noted down, evaluated properly and it will be part of the characterization. It is a very, very important thing. And next important step as far as germplasm evaluation is the preliminary evaluation. So I told you that in addition to the, um, in case of the passport data collection, what happened, we will be focused on the agronomic, certain agronomic traits. In case of preliminary evaluation, we will be focusing on additional agronomic traits. We will be focusing on the physiological characters like time of uh, flowering, time for maturity and we will be going for tillering behavior, tillering characteristics. So this kind of physiological characteristics also will be noted in this particular pre preliminary evaluation stage. And this whatever the traits we are taking into account that also we will be decided by the users because the breeders, the researchers they may be desirable, they, are de they may be desiring certain traits to be evaluated. So based on their demand also the preliminary evaluation will be started, proper strategy will be made as far as the evaluation is concerned. Next step in germplasm evaluation is detailed evaluation. It follows the preliminary evaluation. In this detailed evaluation, the focus will be on the finding out the accession which is having stress tolerance, accessions which is having resistance to the pest and diseases, pathogens and other factors if you look at it as the quality factors. The quality characters is also a very, very important thing. So that also will be evaluated in this particular stage. So quality characters also will be evaluated and when I say this stress tolerance, pest and disease resistance, uh, quality characters, it means it indicates an important thing, the, a multidisciplinary approach is required, a genetist or a cytogenetics or an agronomist, entomologist, pathologist, everything has to come together. It is a very, very difficult exercise for doing, de for performing detailed evaluation. This is a multidisciplinary approach but it is a very, very essential component in 
germ plasm evaluation because that will give lot of edge for us in crop improvement. The evaluation traits if you look at it lot of traits I have talked about it morphological physiological these all the traits varies with the crops it will vary with the ecological zones. When I say it will vary with the crops for example a wheat the wheat in case of wheat crop what all the evaluation trait the trait for example you will be looking for resistance to rust semi dwarf nature yield increase we need to have uh, what you call the more number of grains in the spike so these are all the evaluation traits for wheat crop in case of paddy we will be looking for uh, resistance to pest and diseases which is for the paddy crop and also yield increase we have to increase the yield also and adaptability tillering characteristics so photosynthetic efficiency resource use irrigation use efficiency or water use efficiency in other words so these are all the traits in case of potato you will be looking for resistance to viruses nematodes quality so these are all the traits for the uh, crop like tomato you will be looking for the total soluble solids quality aspect so what i want to say is that this evaluation traits varies with the crops and also it will vary with the ecological zones the traits will be different so a lot of issues are there as far as the germplasm evaluation is concerned there is a, the methodology is very very complex but still we need to take into account very carefully this population size it's a very very important thing because when you see the population size is to be quite larger the sample size should be more in that case what happened the problem of uh, mutation or problem of uh, contamination that all will be reduced the population size will be, should be very very larger in case of an um, allo uh, cross pollinator crops the size will be naturally will be very very high as far as the evaluation technique is concerned if the, we wanted to evaluate the, the accession for pest resistance we need to do it in a controlled environment controlled environmental conditions then in that case we can go for pest resistance evaluation will be possible this evaluation exercise also is a continuous process when i say it is continuous process because the races the pathotypes will be developing and now and then if it is developing this evaluation exercise also will be definitely continuous they are other characters as far as the characters are concerned observable and non observable characters observable are basically the quality characters they have been driven by the monogenic or oligogenic non observable so that is a quantitative character so that is a very very important thing as far as the quantitative trait is concerned non observable characteristics so we need whatever we have done the cataloging so, sorry after evaluation we need to go for cataloging cataloging will be done by uh, going for accession numbers and we have a icec and iw these all the data has to be stored properly and it has to be retrieved whenever it is required and next step is the germplasm multiplication the because whenever there is a breeders are in demand of this germplasm will be multiplying and distributing the germplasm to them and this germplasm can be utilized directly as a variety or it can be subjected to the selection or it can be used as a paradigm hybridization program this germplasm will be a strong foundation for scientific plant breeding and crop improvement thank you